Scripture lesson this morning is found in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse number 10 down to number 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Let's pray together. God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. Master, we thank you, O God, for every good and perfect gift that comes from the up above. Forgive us, O God, of our sins and our failures, O God. Master, we ask that thou would cast it to a sea of forgetfulness where you choose not to remember them anymore. God, we thank you, O God, for this early morning rise, O God, that you allowed us to see a brand new day, O God. God, we ask that you would minister uh, today, oh God. Let something said or done encourage somebody's heart, oh God. Somebody need a word from you, oh God. Somebody need uh, uh, just a blessing from on high. And so, God, we ask that you would minister in the midst of this. Use us, oh God, to your glory and to your praise, oh God. God, we pray for our church family, oh God, uh, those that are far and near, oh God. Master oh God, we pray for our community. Community. Oh God, we pray, oh God, for those that have been impacted by the coronavirus, oh God. And God, we pray your healing hands be upon them, oh God, for we know that you're able to do all things but fail, oh God. And Master, oh God, there are many, oh God, who are comfort and need comforting, oh God. And God, uh, we pray, oh God, that you would strengthen them in a time like this, oh God. Remind them that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal, oh God. And then, God, uh, we, we pray in our communities, oh God, and 
master, so much killing, so much destruction. And, oh, God, uh, we know that uh, you are able, oh, God, to turn it around, oh, God. And, and, oh, God, one of the best war pieces we have, oh, God, is prayer, oh, God. And, and God, so we call upon your name, oh, God, and by the power of heaven, oh, God, oh, God, that you would, oh, God, uh, master, convict those, oh, God, and master, bring them back into your presence, into your fold, oh, God. And God, help us that we'll be witnesses of you, oh, God, that we may tell dying men and women the wages of sin is death, but that the gift of God is eternal and everlasting life. Bless now this time, and we'll be faithful to give you glory, give you honor, give you praise. For we ask this, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I just want to take the time to uh, greet you and thank you for tuning to this channel as we've come this morning to worship the Lord and we're thankful on this second Sunday morning that you are there with us and and we ask that you join in and with our service and at this time we're going to be blessed in the form of music and uh, soulless solos on today will be one of our own brethren brother yeah Tommy Brent amen bless the Lord
one more, one more, one more, Lord, you gave me, yeah, you know you gave me, one more sunny day, Lord, you gave me, you gave me, one more sunny day, you spoke to the clouds, Lord, they all fell, you spoke to the billows, and they all stood, you spoke to the billows, and they all obeyed your will, you gave me one more. One more, 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 Lord, you gave me, yeah, you know you gave me one more sunny day, one more sunny day. Thank you. Amen. Well, let the church say amen. Lord, we are thankful that the Lord is faithful and uh, that he has given us one more sunshiny day. Amen. Amen. I have read for you. I scripture at our scripture time and so it allows me to go straight into the word of the Lord and today I want to speak from this subject I'm still standing I'm still standing <clears throat> finally my brothers be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers, against rulers of the darkness, spiritual wickedness in high place. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, stand. The Christian life is a battle. And I know we tend to think of ourselves that we, uh, we move into the right subdivision, we have the right degrees, uh, we have the right income, we have the right social status. And we tend to think that life doesn't have many problems anymore. We tend to think that because we have the right amount of money in the bank uh, that we are set and that we have no worries. But I want to suggest this morning, my brothers and sisters, that if we are born again Christian, if, if Christ Jesus is uh, the Lord of our lives and we are filled with this Holy Spirit, I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, there's going to be some battles in your life not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. Because you belong to him, and Satan is an enemy of Christ, I want to suggest to you, you're going to have to face some battles. Sometimes in life, that there are going to cause of opportunity that you're going to have to make some decisions. You're going to have to make some choices. And, and, and I, I heard uh, Joshua say, as for me, in my house, we will praise the Lord. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, every now and then, life brings about a, a series of battles. And, and uh, those uh, uh, battles will present itself. Uh, and I know that we, we tend to think that uh, we live on the road of peaches and cream, but I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, that, that we're a bit exposed to liars and false prophets, and uh, we're, we're recognized that we're being battled with those that mean nothing about the love of Jesus Christ. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, this is so because of Satan. Satan still uh, has the rule and authority of this world, but I would argue, my brothers and sisters, he doesn't have all the power, nor does he have all the strength that God declares uh, that Satan has limited power and for a limited time. And I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that because of 
uh, of, of the enemy, Satan. And I, and I know that we live in a world today, you all, that many people don't believe in Satan. Uh, matter of fact, there was a, a poll taken not long ago uh, uh, where even among Christians, uh, right at 60% uh, of Christians don't believe that there is a real Satan. But I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, whether you believe it or not, he's still real. <laughs> and he's still active in this world today. And he seeks to conquer. He seeks to uh, tear down. He seeks to divide, particularly those that are of the kingdom and the house of God. And I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that in this uh, text, uh, the writer here is Paul. And Paul lets us know uh, perhaps he himself uh, among uh, 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 Roman soldiers uh, that they, they have him bound and bothered and perhaps he's looking at their weapons and their weaponry. He's looking at their armor and when he begins to write this lesson, but Paul writes this lesson for you and I to remind ourselves uh, of this war that we shall fight. And he says that uh, finally, he says, be strong in the Lord and uh, in the power of his might. Paul, Paul helps us to understand that uh, this thing will not be fought by our power. It will not be fought in our strength. He says that we need a strength that's far beyond ourselves. We need to put on the whole armor of God. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, he, he makes this point uh, that this battle that we fight, uh, he says that first of all, you, you've got to understand if we're going to uh, overcome this, he first looks at our strength. And he says that, I, I want you to know that God will strengthen you in the midst of the battle, but you've got to show up for the battle. And too too many times, Christians, they don't want to fight the battle. They don't, they don't want to argue with the proper uh, societies uh, 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 of what they say. They don't want to uh, argue with the world, but I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, that every now and then we ought to stand for something. There, there ought to be something, even as the word of God, that irregardless of what the world may say, what the government may, may do, there ought to be something that we ought to stand for. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, he says that as you stand, God will give you strength to stand. And I want to argue my brothers and sisters, you don't ever know until you get out there. You don't ever know until you step out the boat and recognize that God will fight your battles. But listen, as long as you are comfortable, long as you are, are satisfied in the status quo, you don't need his strength. But it's only when you need his strength that God will show up in the midst of the showdown. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, Paul recognizes this, and so he tells us, uh, be, be in the strength of the Lord and, and, and know that, that God uh, is watching over you, that God is, is, is strengthening you day by day by day. But I would argue, my brothers and sisters, not only does Paul lift up our strength, but Paul looks, looks at our suit, and Paul, in this text, he says, put on the whole armor of God. And listen, I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, before you begin your day, you ought to make sure that you suit it up right. Uh, listen, uh, when I was in the military, uh, we had the right and appropriate way, and, and, uh, and your shoes had to be shined a particular way, your, uh, your buttons had to be done a certain way, your hat to be worn a certain way. And, and, and listen, sometimes there were those who, who had the same on, but they wanted to wear it in their style. But I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, you can't be in God's army and work your own style. You got to do according to what the word of God says in our lives. I want to suggest, my brothers, he says that you got to suit up. And, and I want to argue, y'all, sometimes we become lazy. Not long ago, I, I was uh, 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 getting ready to go out and my wife saw what I had on. And, and uh, she stopped me. She, she said, now, uh, now, where are you going? And um, I told her, I said, uh, I'm just going up the street here. And, uh, 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 and uh, she said, well, you, you might need to change what you have on. I said, no, I'm just going to the dollar store, what, by, by goodness. And, uh, and, of course, I was pig-headed. I went on to the dollar store. And when I got to the dollar store, before I could get out my car, 
Everybody that I didn't want to see, I ran into at the dollar store. Listen, sometimes you got to suit up right even when you don't feel like it. But listen, my wife taught me something else, uh, that, that sometimes we would go to, to places and, and uh, it didn't make me no difference what I wore. And, uh, but my wife would even call another person uh, to see what the attire was going to be. What was she wearing? What was, what was the colors for the day? And, and listen, because she thought it'd be important that when she showed up that she would be suitable, help me somebody, right, for the occasion. I would argue my brothers and sisters that God's got a battle that's going on and he says that we need to be suited up and he lifts up these ideas of the breastplate of righteousness, uh, uh, the sword of the spirit. He talks about all of these pieces of the element and I want to argue my brothers and sisters, you can't suit up with your own stuff but you got to suit up with the stuff that God has played and laid out for us and I would argue my brothers and sisters, uh, 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 perhaps Paul was looking at the metals, the forms that were used in that day, but, but, but these things are not what we wear on the outside, but this is what we need on the inside that will protect us from the rouse of the devil. He says that uh, he will be our strength. He says that we've got to be suited up properly, but then he says that we got to be prepared for the struggle. Paul says that, 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 that even though we're in this battle, he says that you've got to know there will be a fight there. And, and I want to suggest y'all, every believer, we've got to understand uh, that the enemy comes uh, not just after you, but he comes after you to get to God. Because if he can find you guilty, then, 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 then the purpose of your going forth will already be defrauded in the purposes of God. Listen, God, God says that he is an accuser, that he goes forth to and from, and he goes to God to accuse you. And listen, y'all, I want, I want to suggest this, y'all. It's a good thing that if he goes, that you don't have to have done what he said that you've done. But listen, you got to make sure now that you hadn't done what he said. You know, because everybody ain't lying on us. Some of us are doing just what they said they have done. But listen, I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, that Satan would drift up a lie, doesn't have to have a lick of truth in it. But I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, that's his job. And, and, and listen, and I want to I help somebody, y'all, is that everything Satan's do is not necessarily people. Sometimes we get at fault with people and we miss the real work that's ahead. Sometimes Satan uses people to fulfill his task. But I would argue, my brothers and sisters, he makes it known that this fight isn't about flesh and blood. Oh, help me somebody. Listen, sometimes we got to recognize that this power is higher than we are. And listen, and we need a power that's greater than us to defeat the enemy that is at hand. And you all, I am, I am, I am convinced uh, that, that this virus that we're dealing with uh, is not necessarily of God, uh, but I believe it comes from Satan himself to destroy us, to divide us, and to take us away. And I, I, I want to encourage Christians that I know that we hadn't been in church in a while and we hadn't done this and that, but I want to argue, listen, your church got to be more than brick and mortar. Your, your church got to be more than the walls of Morningstar. You've got to have a power inside of you that even though I can't come to Morningstar, I can worship in my house. I can worship I can worship driving my car. I can worship sitting in my restroom. Listen, wherever I am, I can lift up a mighty voice unto the Lord. I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, I can break bread the word of God and make it come alive in my life. Listen, because we've got to feed our own souls sometimes. And I want to encourage us, my brothers and sisters, this thing is a battle. And listen, I'm going to argue that sometimes the battle doesn't end overnight, but sometimes you got to go through this this thing. Sometimes it may not last as long as you thought it was. I, I never thought that we would be out of church this long, but I want to I wanna suggest y'all, it's still too soon to come back, but listen, that ain't going to stop us from having church. Uh, listen, my brothers and sisters, because the church is not just these mortars and bricks, but the church is in our hearts. Uh, so I want to I wanna suggest y'all that uh, he, he makes this thing clear that he is our strength, and that we have to suit up, that we have to struggle. And, and uh, uh, the Bible uses this word to wrestle. And, and uh, uh, Brother King, our, our organist, can, 
can identify. He knows something about wrestling. And a uh, little boy growing, growing up, and I can remember his mom being down at the Coliseum, and we were all going for wrestling match on, on Wednesday night. And, and, and listen, everybody in Jackson knew what the, and, and, and listen, and I know now what I didn't know then. And, and, and that, 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 now Brooke may not believe this, uh, but it's already jacked up from the beginning. They, they've already pretended who gonna get hit when and how they were gonna get hit. But I didn't understand that then. I wanna help somebody, y'all. We are wrestling with the devil and it's a jumped up charge. He's already charged us, he already, thinks he's has us and, and listen don't play into his plan we've got to overcome it with love and I would argue my brothers and sisters sometimes Satan plants the temptation and, and he knows what can tie us up and, and bring us down and I, and I want to suggest to you my brothers and sisters we have to wrestle sometimes and listen I want to suggest y'all this, this wrestling is not with hands and fists but sometimes it's even harder because you got to wrestle in your own mind you got to wrestle in your own head because Paul argues in Romans that there are some things that I don't want to do. Help me somebody. But I find myself doing it. Paul says that some things I said I wasn't going to do no more. Uh, but, but, but listen, the temptation came. But listen, I have it on good authority. The Bible says, but with the temptation, God will give us a way of escape. And I'm going to argue, my brothers and sisters, we got to stick with the word. We got to stick with God because only he can give us strength to overcome the enemy, an enemy that's greater than we are. I would su suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, we've got the strength. We've got to suit up with the proper hunger. Then we've got to stand there and wrestle with the enemy. But listen, and he says, above all, to stand. And I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, I don't care how good your suit is, uh, you've got to be willing to stay in the game. Amen. The realization is, y'all, is that there's some folk who started off, listen, have been on the battlefield a long time. Uh, some preachers who've been preaching for a long time, but, but listen, somewhere, somehow, uh, they gave up and, and decided that this wasn't for them anymore. There's some saints that used to sing gloriously to the Lord, and, but, but because some battles they faced, and they decided that they weren't going to sing for the Lord anymore. But I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, this battle is for the long haul. It's not for the journey come lately. It's not just for something to endure for a moment. But listen, when we put on our suit of iron, we don't put it on just for the day. But listen, we, it's, a, it's a continuous action. It's something that I keep on because I recognize that I can't do it all by myself. Listen, I can't handle the enemy. That's the reason why I need the breastplate of righteousness. That's the reason why I need the sword of the spirit so that even when I don't know how to handle it, I can bring forth the word of God that reminds me that I'm the head and not the tail. I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the whole wide world. Listen, I gotta go to my seat, y'all, but I just wanna remind you, my brothers and sisters, that every now and then, you got to be suited, you got to have strength, you got to sustain the struggle, and listen, and you got to stand in spite of. The Bible says that, that Moses one day was in the midst of a battle, and the Bible says that Moses lifted up his arms, but, but Moses was leading the group, and, and, uh, but Moses began to get tired. And, and the Bible says his armor bearers had to come and hold up his arms because every time they lifted up his arms, they would win the battle. And every time his arms fell, he they would lose the battle. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, every now and then, we can't win this battle all by ourselves. We need some other armor bearers. We need somebody else to help lift us up so that whenever we stand in battle, we're never intended to be in this battle all alone. And that's the reason why, y'all, even as a church, we've been praying these months at 6 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the evening. And I would argue, y'all, prayer changes things. And, and listen, listen, if you go through and look at all of the, the weaponry of our battle, uh, the, the Bible says it lifts some six things. Uh, our, our arms, our heads, our, 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 our shoulders, our, our, our feet. But it covers everything of our body but our back. Our back is exposed. Our back is exposed for one reason, y'all. 
because you were never intended to fight this battle alone. But what happens in the back is that somebody else ought to join behind you. Back to back, we can, the, the, the Proverbs says two are better than one. Y'all, I would argue, my brothers and sisters, that even in this time, you may be in a house all by yourself. You may be isolated in a situation, but please know that join with somebody else that will pray with you and for you because it's when we send the prayers up, when we send our praise up, when we send our communication up to God, God sends back power down belief. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, if you find yourself weak, maybe it's because, not because of your communication down here, not because of your connection down here, but you need a connection up there. Just a few days ago, we were working with our IT man here at the church, and uh, he was telling us that our, our connectivity was down, and he says that we needed to, to check our, our, our issue, we needed to check our plan, and uh, he says that, that, that the problem is, it's not so much our communication down here uh, we're going out of here he says but our connectivity power must be up for what needs to go out of here and I want to argue my brothers and sisters we need to have some kind of power that will go up and that will produce power from on high on our behalf I want to suggest to you my brothers and sisters that that that, that we as 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 witnesses uh, that we have to stand but lastly my brothers and sisters he lifts up our salvation he says that that this thing that we fight, it's not the end. He says, because uh, the really and truly, he says, for the believer, the victory has already been won. He says, if we've been born again, listen, Jesus Christ has already satisfied the victory on your behalf and, and my behalf. And thanks be to God for the love of Jesus who died to set me free. Thanks be to God for Jesus, everything that I'm going through right here. Listen, Jesus says he's already overcome the world. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, because of what he's done, he set me free. And because I'm free, listen, the Bible says, whom the Son has set free, uh, uh, they are free, free indeed. Listen, you all, I, I, I'm closing when I, when I tell you this uh, story I, I heard uh, not long ago. It's a story I heard from the Mississippi uh, uh, Mitchell, uh, uh, Dr. Mitchell, I heard him tell this story, and, and, and listen, I want to give him credit for it, but he, he argued that there were three country boys uh, uh, that were best friends, and they were taking a walk in the woods, and uh, they stopped, and one of the friends posed a question to the other boys, and, and but Brent, he said unto him, uh, when we become adults, he says, uh, 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 what kind of men do you think we'll grow into? Uh, he says that when we, when, we, when we walk through here and we see all these trees, what kind of tree that will resemble the man that you were going to be? And one of them said, well, I think I'm going to be a, a pine tree. <laughs> he says, I'm going to be tall so that everyone could see me. I'm going to have the beauty in all seasons, uh, both the winter, spring, summer, and fall. You can see my tinsels. Uh, I will still have needles, and I'll look good in all of the seasons. And the other one says, well, you know, I think I'm going to be an oak tree. He says, I'm, I'm going to take up a whole lot of space. Uh, I'm going to be... Uh, I, my life will be big and broad and I'm going to spread my limbs of grace and greatness that I'm going to have a whole lot of room. And the third boy just stood there and finally they asked him, oh, uh, man, what type of tree do you think you're going to be? And he says, uh, you know, I think I'm going to be a palm tree. Uh, the country boys started laughing at the little boy and uh, they said, you you never seen a palm tree. He said, yeah, my daddy took me down to the coast for vacation one year, and I, I got to see a tree. And he says, uh, this tree would bend back and forth, and I asked my dad what type of tree was that, and my dad said that it was a palm tree. 
I would argue, my brothers and sisters, he began to explain to me the importance of a palm tree. He says, we look first, and, and uh, uh, he says that this palm tree uh, has stood the test of time. He says, even greater, this palm tree has stood the test of a storm. And he says that, that listen, I, I heard what you brothers said. That, uh, one said that you wanted to be a, yeah, 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 a, a palm, uh, excuse me, um, that you wanted to, to ultimately, uh, that you wanted to be a pine tree. He says, but yes, the pine tree is tall. It looks the same through all season, but just in case the storm comes, the pine tree always get all broken up and pieces drawn from all over the place. Uh, I know that you like the way the pine tree look and you like how tall it is, but, but have you ever seen it go through a storm? And he says, uh, and I know uh, that you said you wanted to be an oak tree. Uh, but have you ever seen an oak tree in the storm? And in the midst of the storm, uh, we find that the roots of the oak tree, they spread out even across the land. And he says, because they do, when the storm comes, the roots will drive up and knock the tree down. He says, I, I don't want don't to be an oak tree. He says, but I, I want to be a palm tree. He says, because when the storm comes, and I, I'm so glad he said that not if the storm, but when the storm comes, the roots of the palm tree are not over the ground, but they are under the ground. And the more the tree bends, the deeper the roots go. The farther the tree bends, the deeper the roots grow. And he says that, oh, whatever come what may, I made up in my mind, I want to be like a, a palm tree and I want to help somebody I don't know about you but oh I want to stand uh, still uh, when when the storms of life are raging and I want to argue my brothers and sister it's not when it's not uh, if but it's when the storms will arise uh, it's simply because of everything in life we go through after the storms uh, that you've had in your life you can testify that I'm still standing the reason I know that that uh, we have passed the test because we serve a God uh, whose son is Jesus who stood the test one day for you and for me uh, they tied him to a, a hung they they tried him in a hung jury and they ripped him and uh, all night long but he he took it they put him on a a cross and uh, put them uh, put the cross on his shoulders and they marched him up Golgotha's hill. Uh, but but thanks be to God, he took it. He stood the test. I tell you, they put nails in his hand. Uh, they put nails in his feet and they hung him high and they stretched him wide. And the sun wouldn't rise and the moon couldn't take it and the stars couldn't take it. The earth couldn't take it. But Jesus took it all on your behalf and my behalf. And I want to suggest to you that Friday he died. He died for your sins and for my sins. And, and they, they pierced him in his side that blood and water came running down. I tell you, he died that day so that they placed him in a borrowed man's tomb. But thank God for Jesus. He didn't stay dead. But early the third day morning, he got up from the grave with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. And I just want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, thanks be to God that we serve a God like that, that, that can go through the storms and the times of life and, and that he's able to bring us through. And listen, my, 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 my grandmama would say, ain't he all right? Uh, listen, uh, uh, anybody here uh, this morning can testify, even in 2020, that God has brought you through the storms of life. Uh, we've been through the floods in 2020, but we're still standing. We've been through cancer, but we're still standing. We've been through transplants, uh, but we're still standing. We've been through prison riots, but we're still standing. We've been through killings in our streets of Jackson, but we're still standing. We've been through racial conflicts, but we're still standing. We've been through protests in the midst of our, uh, our hedges and highways, but we're still standing. We've been through conflicts with the uh, 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 
a rebel flag, but we took it and we're still standing. We're going through coronavirus right now, but we're still standing. I heard the hymnologist say, I'm standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. He argues, I'm standing, I'm standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. I'm standing, I'm standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. I would suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, when you think about all that the Lord brought you through, yet you are still standing. When you think that you uh, would never have even been here, but to know that you're still standing. When you thought that you will never finish school, but you're still standing. When your child that you thought would never finish school, and to know that you're still standing, didn't think you'd get that car, but you're still standing. Didn't think that you'd get that house, but you still think you're still standing. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, we went through cancers, we went through heart attacks, we went through divorce, and gone through corner. Uh, coronavirus, uh, tell somebody where, where you are that I'm still standing. And I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, that whatever the, the enemy send my way, long as the Lord is on my side, I'll still be standing. And I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, whenever the storms of this life arise in your life, Listen, listen, you can call on the Lord, and I declare he'll stand by you. When you can't see your way, I, I dare you to call upon his name and see won't he show up in the midst of your showdown. Listen, I just want to, I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, we serve a God that'll show up in the midst of our showdown. But listen, my brothers and sisters, I dare you, I dare you to call upon him and allow him to make your life brand new. When the storms of this old life are raging, stand by, stand by, stand by me. When, when the storms of this old life a raging stand by me when this world is tossing me like a ship out on the raging sea thou who rulest the wind and the water stand by stand by me in the midst of tribulations why don't you why don't you stand by me in have you been there in the midst of tribulations? Stand by me when, when the host of hell assail and my strength begins to fail. Thou who never, help me somebody, never lost a battle, stand by, stand by me. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for all our eyes have seen, all our ears have had heard. We thank you for the sweet Holy Spirit. We ask now, God, uh, that if there is one that has never confessed you as their Lord and Savior, God, I pray that something said or done will draw them to you, oh God. Help them, oh God, to understand, oh God, that they need Jesus. Jesus is our answer. Jesus is our weaponry, oh God. And, and Master, if they don't know him, 
The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And I have it on good authority. Romans 10 and 13 says, That whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. Bless us now, God, as we go forth in your name. God, we ask that you would bless us indeed, enlarge our territory. I pray your hand be with us. We ask that you keep us from sin and evil, that we may not cause pain. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you indeed.